company and other factors not available in all states. Belgium has extradited a Paris attack suspect to stay in trial in France. Salva Abdeslam has been transferred from a maximum security prison in the Belgium city of Antwerp to a prison in France. Abdeslam had been on the run for four months after the November attacks before being captured by Belgian special forces during a raid at a house in the Brussels district of Molenbeek. The 26-year-old is charged with participation in terrorist murder and the activities of a terrorist organisation. The Belgian authorities say Abdeslam will continue to be questioned separately over whether he was involved in the planning of the Brussels bombings, which took place four days after his capture. That's the BBC's Gavin Lee. Thailand being gripped by a punishing heat wave. The average peak temperature each day this month has soared above 104 degrees. And on one day, the mercury spiked to 111 degrees, falling just short of an all-time record. News and analysis at townhall.com. I'm Rich Thomason. McDonald's working to jumpstart its U.S. business is testing chicken McNuggets with no artificial preservatives. The world's biggest hamburger chain says it began testing the new recipe in about 140 stores in Oregon and Washington last month. It's just the latest move by McDonald's to step up the quality of its food as it works to stage a turnaround of its business, which has lost customers in recent years. Last week, it also said it's testing a version of its Big Mac, one that comes with bigger patties. As people pay closer attention to food labels, companies across the food and beverage industry have tweaked their recipes to remove ingredients that may sound unappetizing. Bob Agnew reporting. A federal judge in New Orleans has approved a plea agreement for real estate heir Robert Durst to serve seven years, one month in prison on a weapons charge. The 72-year-old Durst agreed to the sentence, part of a guilty plea in February. He still faces a separate murder charge in California. More on these stories at townhall.com. Good Italian food, daily specials, and a place people enjoy is Spaghetti Eddie's. Indulge in your mouth-watering pizza, pasta, subs, salads, appetizers, and desserts. Open seven days a week, log on to SpaghettiEddie'sPizzaCafe.com and visit them at Taylor Road and on Eden Way North in Chesapeake for lunch and dinner. Like them on Facebook. Italian food you can count on is at Spaghetti Eddie's. Mark your calendar for June 2nd to 5th as Saints Constine and Helen Greek Orthodox Church in Newport News presents the Newport News Greek Festival. Enjoy Greek food, desserts, beverages, music, dancing, arts and crafts, and much more. This is the signature event of the year in Hampton Roads with free admission and parking. Located at 60 Traverse Road off exit 258B on Route 17 in Newport News. For more, log on to newportnewsgreekfestival.org. Mi Hogar is your restaurant for the finest Mexican cuisine in Hampton Roads. At Mi Hogar, everything is prepared fresh in a casual atmosphere. Enjoy traditional favorites such as quesadillas, tacos, burritos, and fajitas, as well as refreshing beverages. Mi Hogar has two locations, 4201 Granby Street in Norfolk and 801 North Battlefield Boulevard in Chesapeake. Call ahead at 640-7705. At Mi Hogar, there is something for everyone. Chesapeake, Virginia, 1650 AM WHKT presents Sports Scene. Sports Scene features local, regional, and nationally acclaimed guests and excellent interviews. Follow Sports Scene on Twitter at Greg Vick and at GJBTV.com. Now here is Greg Vickavaris. All right, thank you very much, Ken Johnson. Glad you're with us on this beautiful April 27th, 2016. Bringing the energy today, folks. This is Sports Scene right here every Wednesday, noon to 1, right here on News Talk 1650 on the radio. Tell your friends. Also, tune in.com, type in WHKT to listen on your phone or your computer. Also, sports highlights, nnpstv.com, interview show host as well. And, of course, Twitter. Four ways to reach me, at Greg Bick, at Sports Highlight, at GJB TV, and HR Online Mall Com. Thank you to our military and first offenders for what you do 24-7. 
Bobby Kipper is our featured guest today. He is the founder and director of the National Center for the Prevention of Community Violence. He also has a big sports background as well. And, of course, uh, guest lineup presented by Mi Casita Mexican Restaurant with two locations in Virginia Beach. Go to HamptonRoadsOnlineMall.com, the restaurant section, to see all the website links. And, of course, the phone line presented by GJBTV.com. Sponsors this month, hard to believe it's almost May already, Fink's Car Care, Spaghetti Eddie's, Long's Billiards, Mi Hogar, Newport News Greek Festival, and the Tides, of course. And, of course, the Newport News Greek Festival is June 2nd to June 5th. For more, log on to NewportNewsGreekFestival.org. Sonny Dirth from the Daily Press will join us in the second half hour. We'll be talking NBA postseason, NHL, Major League Baseball, Josh Norman going to the Redskins, and the hot start for the Orioles and the Nationals. Testimonials from C.P. Shucker, Saffron, Outback, and Toby. Tokyo as well in Hampton. So we'll join Bobby Kipper in just a moment. This is Sports Scene live right here on the radio at 12.08 on News Talk 1650. Tune in.com, type in WHKT. Ken will be reading a little bit of a free liner a little bit later to get free stuff. Keep it locked right here on News Talk 1650. Stay tuned. Long's Billiards in Newport News is having a massive sale. Seven, eight, even nine-foot tables are at an all-time low price, including Connolly, Brunswick, and Olhausen. 1,000 pool cues in stock are up to 30, 40, even 50% off. Over 100 pool tables also on sale. When gone, they're gone forever. Log on to longsbilliards.com. Call 599-3661 and visit them at 9906 Wark Boulevard. Major clearance prices going on now at Long's Billiards. When it comes to automobile service in Hampton Roads, Fink's Car Care is the destination locals have counted on for decades. Family owned and operated, they specialize in transmission service, oil changes, state inspection, radiator service, tires alignments, and showcase wind automotive products. Fink's does it all. Military and senior discounts are available. Find them on Facebook and visit them on South Military Highway in Chesapeake and Victory Boulevard in Portsmouth, Monday through Saturday. For more, log on to Fink'sCarCare.com and call 545-3573 today. Listen to the USCA Baseball Selection Show on News Talk 1650 WHKT and TuneIn.com on April 29th from noon to 1 p.m. Learn about the playing field for America's small colleges as we discuss the USCA Baseball postseason. Follow the USCAA on Twitter and save the date for the USCAA Baseball Selection Show Friday, April 29th from noon to 1 p.m. on 1650 AM and TuneIn.com. Catch up on archived editions of Sports Scene by going to gjbtv.com and clicking the YouTube image on the homepage. Now back to Sports Scene on 1650 AM and TuneIn.com. All aboard! Welcome back right here to Sports Scene, live right here at 12-11. Greg Bickabaris along with Ken Johnson. Glad you're with us. And like Ken just said on the liner, go to gjbtv.com. Hit the YouTube link for archive shows as well as the Dr. Mary V. Bickabaris Memorial Tennis Tournament is online right now on YouTube as well. Just go to gjbtv.com. Hit the YouTube link. All presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. We've had him on Sports Highlights before. Longtime police officer, currently founder and director of the National Center for the Prevention of Community Violence, covering everywhere, has also worked in state government. Let's welcome Bobby Kipper. How are you, Bobby? Greg, I'm great. It's good to be with you. Tell us your background, my friend. You've really had a varied background. I really have. Um, I've been very blessed to have a lot of opportunities. I started out, uh, of course, in my hometown of Newport News, Virginia, where I always wanted to be a police officer. And so at the uh, bright age of 20, 20 years old, I joined the police department in 1977 and had a very, uh, very good decorated career there and uh, worked for 26 years before I retired um, in 2000 and had the opportunity to work patrol, investigation, special ops, uh, served as a hostage negotiator for the police department for 20 plus years and, and worked a lot in the school and administrative programs in the latter part of my career. So very rich career in um in Newport News, and then I uh, spent four years at the Virginia Attorney General's Office being the director of Virginia's gang reduction program, 
um, under Attorney General Jerry Kilgore and spent a year under uh, Bob McDonald. I uh, then uh, came back and, and started a national organization built on solutions for preventing violence across the country, and that's the National Center for the Prevention of Community Violence. And we work from coast to coast, preventing violence in cities throughout America. Very good. And, you know, you talk about how we mentioned so many things are connected now. I just mentioned YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, and so many different forms of social media. Back when you first started, it really was basically just the phone. That's, that's, that's true. I mean, I can remember taking a field phone out um, in the police car, and when we would go to tactical events, you know, tactical incidents in the city, we would have a field phone, a big bag field phone that we'd have to take with us. So that was, uh, it certainly has uh, broadened, and the technology, of course, in public safety has broadened tremendously, which I think is uh, is recognizable, but it's also a plus in, in today's society. Well, before we get into your endeavors here, of course, now let's talk about like the police, because they've been in the news a lot lately, especially in Norfolk, what's going on. In fact, you have one of the sheriffs running for mayor as well. You know, uh, Mr. McCabe, I'm sure, over the years. What are your thoughts about what's going on in Norfolk? And then recently in Portsmouth, you had the sheriff trying to pull over the mayor. And I asked the state police lady if that would have happened if it was a state police officer trying to do it. He would have been pulled over. He would not try to elude the state police. That, to me, was total disrespect. Well, you know, I think, Greg, there are a lot of issues facing our communities. And, I, you know, it, it's it's interesting right here in Hampton Roads that we've had a lot of sort of hot-button issues as it deals with violence in the streets. And I think there's been a cultural shift in, in our in our cities and our communities across America. And I think Hampton Roads is certainly um, not out of the woods with this. I think they're experiencing a lot of the, the growth of, um, you know, gang trafficking and the, gr- the growth of continued drug trafficking, which leads to, you know, weapons possessions and, and eventual violence uh, you know the police are at a, a have been at a very difficult critical you know crossroads in our society and um in policing and the interesting thing about it is is that the confrontation between the community and the police it, it always fascinates me um, when that confrontation has started with people with firearms attacking police officers and obviously i'm a part of the police family and have been and still train police officers throughout america i just think it's unfortunate and it's unfortunate that some of these incidents occur so so uh, quickly, you know, they're attached to each other, or they, they're, they're so rapidly happening in our communities that it always seems from the outside looking in that there could be some type of pattern. But, you know, both the police departments in, in Norfolk, and we do a lot of work with the police department in Norfolk with some of our programs, uh, they're led by a, a very capable police chief who I feel like does a great job in Norfolk with community policing and trying to connect to the citizens. You know, I know uh, Portsmouth has a brand new police chief who brings a, about a lot of decorated background. She served as the assistant public safety director under Governor uh, McAuliffe. So I think that there's some leadership that's very strong in both those police departments. And I think what's happened is a changed culture within communities that um, – it's more than a police issue. These things from Baltimore to Ferguson to everywhere we're talking about, it's very easy to put all that on the backs of police departments, but I see it as a true community issue and a cultural shift in communities across America. We all need to work together, not just the police. All of our communities got to join hands to work it out. True, because the police are your friends as we're talking to Bobby Kipper, who is the founder and director of the National Center of Prevention and Community Violence, former Newport News police officer as well. Greg Picabaris live with you right here on Sports Scene. We'll talk some NBA with uh, Bobby a little bit later too as well. And, and exactly right, when – it's to me, when a police officer says, show me your hands, they're not trying to do anything but protect their lives and go home at the end of the day well. If this was an epidemic, it would have been happened for 40 years. But lately, what happens, like you said, it's been stringing together, unfortunately. And you look at the state police officer, former Newport News police officer that got killed recently. And, of course, uh, that was just a casual confrontation you and I were talking about off the air. Luckily, there were other police personnel absolutely. And, uh, present at the time. Right, absolutely. And, you know, I think one of the things that it really interests me from a research perspective and, you know, as, as a writer is the fact that uh, the social conditions that occur in communities across the country, for some reason, when they rise to a, a, a measure of acting out behavior, then we're, we're quick to blame the police or the government for those conditions. And I, and I really want to make sure that, that we're clear on the fact that those, those conditions did not occur overnight. 
And it's not a situation where law enforcement has a direct science to come into a community and now improve jobs, improve education, improve the things that lead to, you know, a, a lot of the vented anger. And, and an example of that was Baltimore when they talked about the conditions of the community. Well, those conditions were there. They weren't the, the total responsibility of the police department. They're the responsibility of city leadership and state leadership. So these communities that, that are dealing with these conditional issues, we, we've got to stop focusing on that being a police problem. It is a community problem and a cultural problem that needs to be shifted. They're all trying to coexist and live together, work together, play together. You see them at cookouts. You see them at the grocery store. They're all part of your team. What are you typically doing uh, right now in the second quarter of the year? What is your main focus? Main focus is we have two um, focuses predominantly in our n- nonprofit. Uh, we're doing a brand new um, focus on activism actively caring for people policing and uh, we're just uh, uh, announcing um, significant partnership with men for hope and a couple other organizations and and that is a, a program out of virginia tech with dr scott geller who started actively caring for people um, after the virginia tech massacre became very popular um, where we recognize acts of kindness and acts of goodness across america and we've uh, been featured on on fox news uh, national and, and another a number of national publications uh, and going back to norfolk and, and that police department they are one of the pilot departments in america we have six departments in america that piloted this program and uh chief goldsmith and the norfolk police department came on board again a very uh, an advocate of community policing and so we're working with police departments across america the florida police chiefs association just endorsed actively caring for people policing as their official community policing effort going into the state of florida this year so we're working with departments across florida right now in training and getting them up and running on this and very simple it's a very simple aspect but the police officers are now recognizing acts of kindness by citizens and they reward the citizens with a wristband that's entitled actively caring for people and has a number that the citizens can join the actively caring for people movement across the country very powerful movement and um, we're feeling really good about that the second program that's very popular popular in some of the uh, Hampton Road cities is called Green Zone and that's a, a bullying prevention and character building program that we work with schools and communities to try to raise the, the climate of the schools by applying um, what we call Green Zone. Green Zone is a zone of civility where uh, young people and students are coached you know, to be in those zones of civility. And then if they go to the yellow and red zone, they're able to be coached back to the green zone. It's very much an educational coaching method that prevents bullying and builds character. And we we have that program, again, um, as far away as Oakland, California, and Oakland High School and, and throughout Tidewater. I'm glad you brought that up, too, about the bullying, because it just doesn't happen with kids. That beautiful young lady who just, they say now, committed suicide the firefighter had her whole life in front of her over cyber bullying possibly we're just saying possibly over social media and from some of her co-workers shame on them if that's the truth well you know again i, I put a post on facebook you know, just after reading that it's enough to break your heart i mean because the bottom line is is that what really concerns me about that particular incident is obviously there is a culture where either that is not known or it's accepted as an organization which has to shift and that's a leadership issue secondly once you know they found out that this woman had obviously committed suicide out in in a national park here in virginia um they still were apparently posts going on according to what the the report of the virginia pilot of the articles that came out uh that's just that's just indignant upon human rights i mean the, just the people reach to that level um, I call it faceless violence, where people could just commit violent acts and almost assaults against people verbally without showing their face. And to me, it's a it's a coward way of, of trying to prove something that um, that, that certainly it, it just shows a coward of effect of our society. And it, it's a shame it's, it's that we've gotten to this point. See, back in the day, there was no access. Now it's almost like you always hear the kids saying TMI, too much information. How about TMA? too much access the worst and best thing is these smart and iphones that people even the criminal intent they can harass they can solicit they can be anonymous they can send these emails they can threaten with your phone thank goodness there's features that you can block these type people we never grew up with getting emails dear madam dear sir i'm in so and so i need your help 
Right. I, block, I, block, block. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, you know, uh, in some ways, the technology that we've advanced in America has been very, very um, positive. But in some ways, it's also put risk factors on our society and on our population. And one of the things that we've all got, again, again, you know, people that are around these people that are co-workers, this is not one incident in, within this department where this was occurring. These are people that know other people that are doing it, and they're joining in like this is some type of fun and games and again uh, you know the, the the fire chief in this situation says he's going to get his arms wrapped around it too late yeah i mean and take care of it but um you know i i certainly think that what what you know happened there borders on criminal misconduct and hopefully not only the fire chief will look into it but i'm hoping and um uh, it, with the sound of my voice i would just really you know encourage the commonwealth attorney and and other you know justice officials in that area also to look into it for the locals and tourists that are driving in the area you brought up a really good point about the norfolk police chief and even in Newport News, you've seen over the years where they've gone to Portsmouth, too. Some of the former chiefs have gone to both cities. So we're all intertwined in the seven cities and also throughout the state. But for the locals and tourists driving, let's say, from another part of the state, they're used to seeing the state police officers. And then, of course, you see sheriffs in every place. And then the local police and the county police, too. How about as far as jurisdiction and so forth? Do, and then you, you mentioned the um, we mentioned the top set about the couple of the shootings in, in Norfolk recently that the state police are now going to overlook that. Right. Do they have most of the power without within the state? Yeah, the state police, you know, obviously are sworn to uphold the laws of the state of Virginia, and they can uh, they can operate anywhere in the Commonwealth of Virginia. They're they're not restricted to a certain area. Obviously, troopers are assigned to a certain area, but their 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 powers of arrest is given by the state of Virginia throughout the Commonwealth. And then, of course, in the individual cities and jurisdictions, they still have powers. I mean, they can go in the city of Newport News. They can go on any streets there and exercise their their right to to arrest. Uh, you know, the um, the issue of state police being involved in investigating shootings that's normally done at the request of the police chief or the leadership of the department and um you know there are there are various you know indicators that would create that happening but um the state police are are always ready to assist the local department if they're requested and i think that's exactly what happened in norfolk so they they stepped in at request you're also um into consulting as well i am let's talk about it well, you know, we, uh, I am the president of the Kipper Group, and we do uh, training and consulting throughout the United States. Uh, again, we've done a lot of work in Florida. We uh, uh, teach part-time with our consulting group at the, at the University of North Florida and um, at the University of Tennessee Martin. We're doing, uh, you know, I'm a writer, and we've written three books, and, and one of our biggest um, you know, books and, and the things that we do in our consulting centers around personal and professional performance. And uh, we do a lot of training and performance-driven thinking. It's a book and a concept that I came up and branded um, out of our corporation, and it's catching on, and um, people really need to, to take a look at it. And, and I'm speaking tonight, as a matter of fact, in the Outer Banks of North Carolina at the graduation of their uh, Leadership Institute at DOBX, and uh, really excited to share performance-driven leadership with them. But the Kipper Group is up and running well. We're doing well. We're, um, we're going throughout the country teaching people how to be better performers in their personal and professional life. Go ahead and plug the website. Yeah, it's the kippergroup.com, mm -hmm. and you can go in there and find out how to certify your company to be performance-driven. We have actually have um, organizations in America who have already been completely trained and have received uh, the certification that they're a performance-driven agency. That is both for uh, profit agencies, organizations, or nonprofit organizations, or government organizations. We've already certified at least one police department as being a performance-driven agency. So tips and advice for tourists coming to this area during the summer. There's also people going about their daily lives, parking their car. I always tell some of my friends and family members, take 30 seconds before you exit your car to look around you. Sure. That that can save a life sometimes. Sure. Physical and virtual awareness is, is probably the best part of safety. And, and you know, safety, you know, we, we've turned safety over to technology. And, and I always say that the technology is good to assist in safety, but the, the best way to, to be safe is to effectively manage people and your own behavior. I mean, you can't give that up to someone. You can't just think that you're going to be protected because there's a police department. You've got to really take responsibility for your own safety. Be aware, know virtually, like I said, what's all around you instead of just in, and you're looking out one side. And, and I agree with that. I, I tell people to hesitate when they're going into a, a door, hesitate when you're coming out. I mean, there's just some basic common sense things. And a lot of times we give common sense up for because we're in such a hurry. 
hurry. But if you're going to be in a hurry, you got to always remember, you know, safety doesn't hurry. It's got to be. It's got to take some time. And unfortunately, you hear that power numbers. That might be true in the business world, but also in the criminal intent too. That normally people get in in trouble, gangs or whatever, because of the peers they hang around with. And that goes for adults too, as well, who have issues too. No doubt about it. I, you know, again, I, I, you never see a lot of the the violence that occurs even in our streets as a, as an indicator of just one person acting alone, especially in drug trafficking today in most of our communities across America we know for a fact that it's it's openly controlled by you know controlled groups and communities and it's very difficult that um that you know these people have to congregate together to to commit you know their their crimes but you know there's always been powers and numbers and they believe that they can you know be dominant in any one city or any one community or in any one neighborhood or street with a good number of people and that's putting the rest of the community at fear and and it's working we're going to take a short break, come back and talk a little sports with Bobby before we let him go to his endeavors for the rest of the afternoon. We're talking right here to Bobby Kipper, the founder and director of the National Center for the Prevention of Community Violence. Basically, it starts, Bobby, real quick, by the time you walk out the door each morning Absolutely. or the company you keep. Absolutely. All right, right here on News Talk 1650, also tunein.com. Type in WHKT to listen to your phone or computer. Sonny Dirth will join us a little bit later right here on Sports Scene. Ken will be giving you some information a little bit later as well about some prizes that you can win right here on Sports Scene. Stay tuned. Kenny, it's all you. And we've got a pretty decent day in, in store until the rain and showers come. Increasing cloudiness still looks pretty nice right now, but looking for showers and thunders. We had later in the afternoon, 77 for the high cloudy showers. Overnight thunderstorms tonight, a low of 60. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy skies, some scattered thunderstorms, and a high of 72. Cloudy for Friday, 68, mostly cloudy. Saturday, 67, and some afternoon rain on Sunday with a high of 70 degrees. Something is going on between now and May 26th at the Gilmerton Bridge, the drawbridge in Chesapeake, a military highway. Possible extended openings expected each day at 1 o'clock through May 26th. What's going on is they're working on the railroad trestle right next door to it. To do that, they have to pretty much keep that trestle down, which pretty much closes down Elizabeth River to boat traffic and all the boats are going to pile up and then at one o'clock they're going to open the Gilmerton Bridge and let all that boat traffic through and you know what that means slow boat to China going to mean a lot of backup and delay on military highway each afternoon at one o'clock so be advised use the high rise and that backup news is next stay tuned for more sports scene on AM 1650 1230 with SRN News I'm Rich Thomason in Washington Donald Trump's rivals are running out of chances to stop him from clinching the GOP nomination by the end of the primaries. Trump won more than 90 percent of the delegates at stake in five contests yesterday. A former high school athlete who says he was abused by Dennis Hastert when the former U.S. House Speaker was his wrestling coach told the courtroom that he was devastated after Hastert abused him in a high school locker room. Those remarks, part of a victim impact statement at Hastert's sentencing today at a federal courthouse in Chicago. President Obama planning his first trip to Flint, Michigan, since the city's drinking water was found to be tainted with lead. On Wall Street, the Dow Jones Industrial Average trading about 43 points higher. The Nasdaq Composite Index is down 39. The S&P is off a fraction. More details at srnnews.com. I'm Nick Soboleski, a select quote agent with a true story that could save you hundreds of dollars a year. A woman named Linda just called. Her husband, Ray, has a $300,000 group life insurance policy, but is changing jobs and can't take it with him. Well, I impartially shopped the highly rated term life insurance companies we represent and found Ray, who is 41 and takes medication to control his cholesterol, a 10-year, $500,000 policy for under $26 a month. That's almost twice the coverage for less than half of what he had paid. If SelectQuote hasn't shopped for your life insurance, you're probably paying too much. For your free quote, call 1-800-423-4557. That's 1-800-423-4557. 1-800-423-4557. Or go to SelectQuote.com. We shop. You save. Get full details on the example policy at slowquote.com slash commercials. Your price can vary depending on your health, issuing company, and other factors not available. Mark your calendar for June 2nd to 5th as Saints Constantine and Helen Greek Orthodox Church in Newport News presents the Newport News Greek Festival. Enjoy Greek food, desserts, beverages, music, dancing, arts and crafts, and much more. This is the signature event of the year in Hampton Roads with free admission and parking. 
located at 60 Traverse Road off exit 258B on Route 17 in Newport News. For more, log on to newportnewsgreekfestival.org. For over 55 years, Long's Billiards is the place to go for all your billiard supplies. Long's Billiards has Brunswick and Old House and Pool tables at more than 50% off. Long's Billiards has never offered prices this low before. Seven, eight, and nine foot pool tables on sale now. Hurry, this deal won't last. Visit Long's Billiards in Newport News or log on to longsbilliards.com. Call now, 599-3661. That's 599-3661. Listen to the USCA Baseball Selection Show on News Talk 1650 WHKT and TuneIn.com on April 29th from noon to 1 p.m. Learn about the playing field for America's small colleges as we discuss the USCA Baseball postseason. Follow the USCAA on Twitter and save the date for the USCAA Baseball Selection Show Friday, April 29th from noon to 1 p.m. on 1650 AM and TuneIn.com. Interact with Sports Scene on Twitter at Greg Bick. Email the show, bcogb at hotmail.com. Now back to Greg bick in the Hampton Roads Online Mall.com studios. It's now time for Greg's Highlights, presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. And if you're new to sports scene, Kenny and I used to work together for six years at another news talk station. My background is on GJBTV.com. We're all about interaction. Tweet me at Greg Bick right here as well. Catch the new wave as you're defending 2015 International League South Division champion Norfolk Tides. Take the field at beautiful Harbor Park. Bring your friends and family to root on the Orioles of tomorrow today. For more, log on to NorfolkTides.com for schedule information. This is the premier buffet in Hampton Roads, Tokyo Grill and Buffet. Indulge in this all-you-can-eat extravaganza, which includes Chinese, Japanese, hibachi, sushi, and American food. They have fruit and dessert as well and delicious sushi. Tokyo Grill and Buffet is open for every occasion with lunch at only $6.39, dinner at $9.39, and Sunday all day is $9.99. Located at 49 West Mercury Boulevard in Hampton, they have takeout as well. New management, new ownership. Go by and see it as well, folks. GJB TV. TV.com. Click the YouTube link for archived shows. Lunchtime, order online at papajohns.com. Shop on the Marketplace sponsors. Save the date each Wednesday from noon to 1 for Sports Scene right here on 1650 AM. TuneIn.com. Type in WHKT. TGIF on Lynn Haven Parkway. TGIFridays.com. Lunch, dinner, late night. Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. Browse, shop, visit several dozen businesses. Just click the image. Takes you right to the website. Well, there's another Greek festival going on as well. That's the Norfolk Greek Festival, May 12th to May 15th on Granby Street. And find a B-dubs at buffalowildwings.com. Sonny Dirth will join us in just a few moments. Back with Bobby Kipper. Bobby, you're a longtime referee. And, of course, you've been involved with a lot of different sports, your entire background. Are you amazed that the shape these referees, especially in basketball, because baseball, they're really not moving. Football, they have to move as well. But basketball, they really are moving. Yeah, it's really, uh, it's gotten very fast paced and a lot of it's above the rim. And I think what's really helped in officiating at the basketball level certainly has been the the three-man crew. I mean, when I first started officiating and officiated for 30 years at the Virginia high school level, uh, we had two officials for years. And uh, you can imagine what that would look like today in in some of these games, especially these highly contested games. But uh, it's very fast paced. It's it's extremely athletic and um, it's a good way to stay in shape, though. I can say that. Yeah, I've interviewed Jesse and Brian Crisley both. Of course, uh, Jess was a longtime NBA referee, which I prefer the 24-second shot clock myself. His son, a longtime college referee, and you've known both of them for a long time. Absolutely. I've known Jess. I grew up knowing Jess for forever. And then, of course, Brian and I, uh, in Brian's early uh, stages of his high school refereeing career, uh, he and I worked several games together. And both great people. And, of course, Brian just got a, a promotion as the supervisor of ACC officials. So that's a, yeah, congratulations to Brian Kersey. And I think he'll do a great job for the league. He's, he certainly uh, really knows basketball, and, and he knows the officiating side of it. So I think it'll work out well for both. When you're a supervisor like that, does that mean you're not going to actually work any games anymore? Yeah, How is that going to work? He should not be on the floor officiating when he's supervising other officials. And, and Brian will do a great job because he's always been about trying to bring people along and, and work with new officials. So I think it's a, it's a good fit for the Atlanta Coast Conference and, and for Brian as well. And you talk about sports in this region. Of course, we've 
heard for years about an NHL team, an NBA team. Uh, Virginia Beach is building a brand new arena, but I've always told people Virginia Beach is number one, number two, and number three is the oceanfront from Memorial Day to Labor Day. That's gonna, what's going to attract a lot of people. You can bring all the amenities, the tides and the admirals. Their attendance is slipping. There's only so much economic dollar to go around. I, I agree with that. You know, one of the things that is sort of remarkable to me, Greg, through the years is the lack of regionalization when it comes to sports. You know, I feel like that, you know, you, you have a peninsula side and you have a you know, you know, south side. And if we're going to get a professional sports team in this region, we all got to put our, our heads together and just make it, you know, a Hampton Roads tradition to have the sports team. We can't, you know, there's just too many silos in communities when it comes to sports and when it comes to the money for stadiums and and the things that are going on in arenas. I mean, everybody wants to call it their own. We've got to, we've got to get out of our silos if we're ever going to have a major sports team and make it successful. But the biggest thing people deal with is that Friday afternoon HRBT. Absolutely. That has not changed since we've been kids. It's still the same. The Monitor Merrimack's been around for several decades, too. That helps, but it seems like there's always something, whether it's a wreck in the tunnel or something. If you're trying to get to dinner, trying to get to the Outer Banks, trying to get somewhere, there's always some stoppage at HRBT or the Monitor Merrimack or the James River Bridge Tunnel. I agree. I mean, you know, again, we've worked on Hampton Roads transportation, and, and there was big referendums here and there about transportation, but uh, it's a nightmare. There are times when you're just sitting in a parking lot trying to to get from the peninsula to the south side, and, and that really does influence attendance to a major sporting event. So uh, we've got a lot of a lot of work to do before we start really housing a major team and feel like it's going to be supported. We're talking to Bobby Kipper, president of the Kipper Group, as well as the uh, National Center for the Prevention of Community Violence, been a police officer, worked for the state of Virginia, and been involved in sports refereeing as well at the uh, basketball level too as well. And you talk about different amenities going on, but like we said, there's only so much you can do, and it comes down to your time, your talent, your treasure. And, you know, we mentioned the smartphone and the iPhone. A lot of these kids today, they're not um, as transparent because of the lack of communication skills that they could be in the same room texting rather than you and I picked up the phone and said, Bobby, you want to meet somewhere? Let's do it. That's true. But those days seem like they're dwindling. They, they, they do. And, and, you know, the tension span of, of young people today when it comes to sporting events, especially, you know, sporting events that take over, you know, two or three hour periods of time, it's not quite where it was when we were kids. I mean, we grew up watching it and uh, with our parents and just even attending it and being involved in it in high school. Uh, there's a there's another culture here today that, that goes the other direction. So I, I see that it's hard to fill seats. I mean, there, you know, you ask about the, the number of games in a season, even for baseball. I think baseball is experiencing that. I mean, it's hard for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights for you to fill up a stadium. And, and I think they're going to continue to see that be a struggle. I'm you know, a traditionalist. I'm a conservative as well. and um, But still, 162 games compared to football that has 16. Basketball that's got 82 in the playoffs. And NHL has got less as well. You know, it just that just seems like a lot of time on the road. You know, I mean, they're getting paid a lot of money. But still, just to be away that much, to me, is almost too much. Well, it's interesting that the, the baseball season starts when it's, it's fairly cold. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've experienced that here in the last few weeks where there have been even, I think, a couple of games where we had snow um and then it lasts into of course october with the with the world series of course i'm a big baseball fan so i don't mind it stretching out but at the same time again it, it does put um it, it puts a strain on a market and i think that um and and of course it overlaps nba playoffs are, are now you know as baseball season starting these sports overlap so much that it's really hard to have attention span and people are you know they either bleed and, and believe one sport and and so i think that that really affects sports overall because people are really just wrapped up in their own daily lives if they go to something it's like save the date almost like a wedding type thing and it really is like that it, it's true and it, you know we are the busyness of our lives it's you know i consider it a, a just a, a great night out to go to you know harbor park and to the norfolk tides and just really enjoy that and it's almost like a, a vacation in the evening for me but it's difficult with even my life and and you know we try to go more than we can but but it's just it, we're very busy Right. Leave us with uh, a couple plugs on your your websites. Um, for the National Center for the Prevention of Community Violence, it's solveviolence.com. And if you go there, um, you'll see a lot of our programming. And with the Kipper Group, uh, my private organization that does training and performance training and coaching is uh, thekippergroup.com. 
and uh, reach out to me on either one of those websites, and I'll be glad to to interact with you on any of the issues. If it's performance coaching or if it's an issue of bullying, uh, you, we go both directions. So. Right. Just uh, the best thing to do is just, uh, like my grandmother would say, two eyes in the front, two eyes in the back. Absolutely. Stay safe. Very good. Bobby Kipper, all the best. Safe travels to you. Always enjoy seeing you over the years in Newport News. Consider you a friend and all the best to you and your family. Thanks, Greg. It's great to be with you. Very good. Right there. Bobby Kipper, folks, from president of the Kipper Group, as well as the National Center for the Prevention of Community Violence. We'll take a short break on Sports Scene. We'll be back live after these messages. People in Chesapeake and Hampton Roads have come to expect the finest Italian food at Spaghetti Eddie's. In addition to great lunch and dinner served daily, this fine establishment caters to and can host your party. Call 484-7301 for their Taylor Road location and call 410-5500 for their restaurant in Greenbrier. For more, log on to Spaghetti Eddie's Pizza Cafe.com. Mark your calendar for June 2nd to 5th as Saints Constantine and Helen Greek Orthodox Church in Newport News presents the Newport News Greek Festival. Enjoy Greek food, desserts, beverages, music, dancing, arts and crafts, and much more. This is the signature event of the year in Hampton Roads with free admission and parking. Located at 60 Traverse Road off exit 258B on Route 17 in Newport News. For more, log on to NewportNewsGreekFestival.org. Mihogar is your restaurant for the finest Mexican cuisine in Hampton Roads. At Mihogar, everything is prepared fresh in a casual atmosphere. Enjoy traditional favorites such as quesadillas, tacos, burritos, and fajitas, as well as refreshing beverages. Mihogar has two locations, 4201 Granby Street in Norfolk and 801 North Battlefield Boulevard in Chesapeake. Call ahead at 640-7705. At Mihogar, there is something for everyone. Now back to Greg McAveris and Sports Scene in the Hampton Roads Online Mall.com studio. Turn down for what? Turn down for what? Turn down for what? And want to thank Bobby Kipper right there as well for joining us on Sports Scene, a local tradition of CP Shuckers with locations on Shore Drive and Pacific Avenue. People love their prime rib seafood and much more. They showcase NASCAR, MLB, NHL, NBA, college uh, sports, golf, soccer, tennis. Like both locations on Facebook and log on to cpshuckers.com. Eat or be eaten at CP Shuckers. Go by and see Matt and Mark. And, of course, they have their premiere event coming up in the spring, Monday, May 2nd, at the beautiful Oceana Golf Course in Virginia Beach. For more, go to cpshuckers.com. It is their great golf tournament presented by Aloha Circle and CP Shuckers, May the second. You don't want to miss that as well. Let's welcome Sonny Durth, longtime guest on radio and TV with me from the dailypress.com. He was also a commentator on the Dr. Mary V. Bickavaris Memorial Tennis Tournament, which you can see right now by going to gjbtv.com, hitting the YouTube link. Sonny, welcome on this beautiful Wednesday. Yeah, thanks, Greg, and thanks, Ken. Very good, Sonny. Let's start off with uh, Virginia's baseball team. They're picking the uh, the effort back up, 27-17, and 17, got an 8-4 to four win over Old Dominion. Indeed, I got to see them yesterday over at Harbor Park, where there was a crowd of uh, 48-26. Uh, ODU took a 4-0 lead in the second inning, but uh, UVA's bullpen really came through and didn't let the Monarchs score again, and UVA just kept chipping away and behind guys like Pavin Smith. Virginia is so dangerous once they get to the postseason, the key is just getting to the postseason for them. Uh, yeah, and I certainly think they're well on the road at this point. Uh by winning two of three against Miami last weekend, which was the number one team in the country at the time, it got the Cavaliers back up to number 21. Very good. Talking to Sonny Durth from the Daily Press. Greg Bickabaris, glad you're with us for Sports Scene. Stay tuned for prizes coming up when Ken Johnson does the announcement. Now, the uh, lacrosse team is normally making the NCAA tournament at 7-7. Seven and seven. It's going to be a stretch this year. Yeah, they're struggling. I think they probably have to win the ACC tournament, which would be an upset in order to make the field. Let's switch to the NBA. It seems like the theme this year has been Cleveland uh, it got by Detroit, but after that it's been all about injuries, it seems like. Yeah, it's it's unreal. You know, it's a, a bad thing for Stephen Curry to hurt his knee. It looked like the Clippers might have a chance to unseat them, 
But now, since they don't have Chris Paul or Blake Griffin, uh, it's going to be hard for the Clippers even to get by Portland, which has now, in effect, become reduced to a best-of-three series. Right, absolutely. Talking to Sonny Durth right here, talking all things sports. For more, for his information, go to dailypress.com. Sonny, you're on Twitter. Go ahead and plug your Twitter handle. Yeah, twitter.com slash S-D-E-A-R-T-H. Redskins back in the news. A lot of people on ESPN 980, and we'll be talking to Kevin Sheen in a couple of weeks who does the uh, morning show from 7 to 11 starting May the 2nd on ESPN 980. And, of course, Josh Norman's been all over the news, a former um, Panther. That certainly solidifies the Redskins' secondary. They had some trouble defending the pass last season, but now they have a really good core group, and I would expect them to – compete to defend the NFC East Championship. Very difficult schedule, but we'll see what they can do as well. And of course, Sonny, a big event coming up in Williamsburg is the Women's Golf Tournament. That's always a lot of fun. I understand Michelle Wee is now going to play in it. That's a shame. Uh, but anyway, you know, uh, Minji Wee is the defending champion. Uh, the field always has good depth. It, it should be very competitive going into the final day, and it's kind of like a, a free lesson getting to watch those ladies. Absolutely. Kings Mill as well. And, of course, uh, leave us with the uh, French Open. Who do you like uh, in the next slam? Uh, if ever Novak Djokovic is going to get it, now it would seem like the time. But the way Rafa Nadal is playing, it's hard to argue against him. He looks like he's back to close to his peak form. Very good. Sonny Durth, thank you so much, my friend, and thank you for all that you do in the world of sports. Yeah, thank you. All right, Sonny Durth right there from dailypress.com. Give us a little sports update as well. This is Sports Scene every Wednesday, 12 to 1, right here on News Talk 1650. Great audio and production by Ken Johnson. He records the show every week right here. Also, gjbtv.com on the YouTube link. We'll take a short break. Ken and I will come back with some great banter after these messages. Long's Billiards in Newport News is having a massive sale. Seven, eight, even nine-foot tables are at an all-time low price, including Connolly, Brunswick, and Olhausen. 1,000 pool cues in stock are up to 30, 40, even 50% off. Over 100 pool tables also on sale. When gone, they're gone forever. Log on to longsbilliards.com. Call 599-3661 and visit them at 9906 Wark Boulevard. Major clearance prices going on now at Long's Billiards. When it comes to automobile service in Hampton Roads, Fink's Car Care is the destination locals have counted on for decades. Family owned and operated, they specialize in transmission service, oil changes, state inspection, radiator service, tires alignments, and showcase wind automotive products. Fink's does it all. Military and senior discounts are available. Find them on Facebook and visit them on South Military Highway in Chesapeake and Victory Boulevard in Portsmouth, Monday through Saturday. For more, log on to Fink'sCarCare.com and call 545-3573 today. Mark your calendar for June 2nd to 5th as Saints Constantine and Helen Greek Orthodox Church in Newport News presents the Newport News Greek Festival. Enjoy Greek food, desserts, beverages, music, dancing, arts and crafts, and much more. This is the signature event of the year in Hampton Roads with free admission and parking. Located at 60 Traverse Road off exit 258B on Route 17 in Newport News. For more, log on to newportnewsgreekfestival.org. Listen to the USCA Baseball Selection Show on News Talk 1650 WHKT and TuneIn.com on April 29th from noon to 1 p.m. Learn about the playing field for America's small colleges as we discuss the USCAA baseball postseason. Follow the USCAA on Twitter and save the date for the USCAA Baseball Selection Show Friday, April 29th from noon to 1 p.m. on 1650 AM and TuneIn.com. Now back to Greg McAveris and Sports Scene in the Hampton Roads Online Mall.com studio. Baby, I'm playing on you tonight. Hunt you down, eat you alive. Just like animals, animals, like animals. So maybe you think that you can hide. I can smell yourself for miles. All right, welcome back live right here to Sports Scene 1251 News Talk 1650. Greg Bigavaris along with Ken Johnson. Glad you're with us. Hope you enjoyed our guest right there, Sonny Durth and Bobby Kipper, who's got a great book, Performance Driven Thinking. Really excellent, excellent uh, gentleman, Bobby Kipper, 
former police officer, also a referee. He's done basically a lot of different things in Hampton Roads. And speaking of Hampton Roads, introducing lunch at Outback every blooming day with your favorites like Aussie tacos made with chicken, fish, or steak. Try their new ribeye melt topped with bacon. Yum, yum, yum. Cheddar and garlic aioli all in a toasted artisan bun with over 70 lunch combinations starting at only $6.99. It's now lunch at last at Outback Steakhouse. 1255 Fordham Drive in Virginia Beach. Give them a call at 523-4832 and go by and see Michael and the great staff at Outback Steakhouse in Newport News. Lunch, dinner, great appetizers, kids menu. They've got it all at the Outback in Virginia Beach. And Kenny, of course, let's get to what? Tease me off. What Tees You Off, presented by GJBTV.com. And stay tuned for some prizes here in just a moment. Kenny, printers, they're always acting up. They always seem temperamental. And even if you have black or color ink, neither one seem like they get along or coexist that well. Yeah, well, you know, they can give you the printer for little or nothing. The printer itself costs practically nothing. They just want you to buy a lot of ink. So the more it messes up, the more ink you waste. And therefore, the more ink you have to buy. So it's all marketing. It's like light bulbs. They can make light bulbs that last forever and ever and ever. They've got Edison bulbs that have been running nonstop since 1910. Wow. So, yes, they can last. But where's the profit in that? There isn't any. So that's why things tend to fall apart a little quicker. So you have to buy more of them. That's the philosophy. Remember, we have fun with this. This is what teased me off, all presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com and GJBTV.com. Ken, peanuts, they're a great snack. But why do people always say, you know, you're getting paid in peanuts? Like using the word peanuts as like, you know, why not Doritos or Fritos? Why are they picking on peanuts, for God's sake? It's a good question. I would like to know the origin of that phrase. Yeah. It's got to probably relate back to maybe the migrant days or something when they couldn't pay in money, but they would pay in food. And what was the cheapest food to grow, I guess, at that time was peanuts, maybe? That'd be interesting to find out. Right. Speaking of food, can these these cold cuts get a lot of respect? Ham, cheese, salami, turkey. How about the lack of respect for bologna? I love bologna. Why is it not up there with those other cold cuts? Uh, maybe because of the use of the word. Oh, that's just a bunch of bologna. It's, gotten, it's gotten kind of short shrift. And you know, all beef bologna, if it's the, a good brand and you put a little stuff on it, that's delicious. Try frying it. Oh, it's so good. Right. Complicated foods at catering events. Folks, just keep it simple. That's not the time to experiment. <laughs> right, Kenny? You go to a function or a sporting event or a wedding. Just keep it simple. All right. Kenny, you're in the movie business. The Big Fat Greek Wedding too. Look, I'm Greek. That was an embarrassment of a movie. They should have only kept it Big Fat Greek Wedding 1. It did horrible in the box office. Some of the worst acting I have ever seen. And really, just go away, please. Kenny. I didn't see the first there one. There you go. And I probably will never see it. And I definitely am not going to see the second one. Kenny, waiting for an oil change. Oh, my goodness. You go to a dealership, you have to wait two hours for an oil change. Dude, I got to turn you on to the right place. I go to Checkered Flag Toyota on Virginia Beach Boulevard. I'm in and out of there before I have a chance to warm the seat. There you go. All right, Kenny, Ricky Gervais trying to do any type of endorsement. It just doesn't transcend. You don't like Ricky? He cracks me up. I, I, maybe it's because I'm, I'm a bit Anglo-Saxon in my background, and I'm an right. Anglophile anyway, but Gervais just cracks me up. I'd rather see him just goofing off on a commercial than you know some... Except for I do like the, the lady who does the AT&T. Uh, what is her name? Vylander. She's an actress. She's a cutie. Speaking of um, up and down, Kelly Ripa having a temper tantrum in her 40s that Michael Strahan, who's an adult, can make his own decision that he wants to leave the program, so she just pitched a fit. Kelly Ripa, get over yourself. Well, as I understand it from what I'm hearing, it's not so much that she was upset about Michael leaving. I mean, you're free to come and go. It was the way the folks at ABC handled it. They did not handle that very well. They treated her with no respect, like keeping it a secret and dumping on her at the last minute. She's been with them for decades, like close to 30 years, if not more. And she's done an excellent job. She was with ABC for all my children, even before she did the live thing. So she's been with the company for a long time. And then they'd be treated with that kind of disrespect. 
I really can't say as I blame her. That part I do agree with. All right, before Ken gives away his prizes, Saffron Mediterranean Cuisine. They've got great shish kebabs. They're hiring as well. Hot and cold appetizers, entrees, fish, kids' menu, desserts. Go by and see David, assorted wraps, outdoor dining. You can enjoy some great outdoor dining, beautiful spring weather. they got great stews. Open for lunch and dinner starting at 11 o'clock in the morning. Dine in, carry out catering, great healthy food. No other place like it, Saffron Mediterranean Cuisine. They're now hiring at 10417 Wark Boulevard in Newport News, Virginia, 223-9978. Ken, take it away. And the first person to text the word free, F-R-E-E, the first person to text that word free to 757-291-4234. That's right, just text the word free. Free to 757-291-4234. You win yourself movie and tides tickets. So text free to 757-291-4234 now. Yes, Kenny, of course, uh, there's so much going on as well. And we were talking with Bobby Kipper right there, really excellent guest that some in Hampton Roads, we try to maybe make too many things going on, too many different concert venues, too many different theaters, too many different this, too many different that as well. And it's just always something going on. Congratulations to the free winner. We'll just say the number is 572. We'll call you after the show. You do win the prizes. And, Kenny, we have some of the best listeners right here on Sports Scene, too. You know that. Oh, yeah. we got some great folks listening to the station. They listen pretty much. We appreciate your patronage, folks. We really do, especially since we don't always let everyone know where we are too easily. Exactly. All right. Congratulations. And Ken and I will be giving away free stuff throughout the uh, spring and the summer. Congratulations again. You'll be getting the movie and the Tides tickets right here. Don't forget GJBTV.com. Hit the YouTube link for archive shows as well. And of course, a place to visit folks. You want to look for a retail services marketplace, a coupon, go to Hampton roads, online mall, Dot com. Great guest next week. we got Phil Wood from Masson. He'll be talking Orioles and Nationals, both off to a very good start, especially the Nationals. The Orioles are kind of cooling off a little bit as well. And then we're going to talk to Kevin Sheehan from ESPN 980 on, um, in a couple weeks, and he'll be talking all things Redskins as well, especially with the Norman uh, trade as well coming from the Panthers too. And, of course, this is Sports Scene. For more, go to gjbtv.com and thank all of our great sponsors as well. And, of course, we got coming up the uh, North Greek Festival coming up May 12th to May 15th on Granby Street and of course the Newport News Greek Festival right there June 2nd to June 5th for more go to newportnewsgreekfestival.org so for Ken Johnson our great guest Bobby Kipper and Sonny Dirth I'm Greg Picaveras we'll talk to you soon Kenny Johnson take it away and congratulations to the prize winner AM 1650 WHKT Portsmouth, 1 o'clock.